I practice a lot with my lights. Even though I've been shooting about 30 years, I, I'm constantly practicing with my speed lights. I find the more familiar you are with them, the less likely I am to accept reality for what it is. I can alter reality to suit my particular vision. These speed lights give me the opportunity to create a vision for myself. We're going to be photographing at a very funky doorway that's bright red in open shade during the day, but I'm going to drive down that exposure to make it feel like nighttime, and I'm going to put an evening lamp, like a task lamp, okay. like it's like you're out in the back of an alley, maybe just loosening up your lungs before going inside through the doors on the stage to play. In this particular setting for the saxophone player, it was positioned in open shade on a street corner in New York. And what I was able to do is to drive down the ambient light to what would be considered a, an underexposed image. And to me, an underexposed image actually looks like nighttime. This is the idea, Benny. We're gonna put uh, Eduardo here. I think this is gonna be outside of our frame. So we're gonna put a boom here, up, and we're gonna direct the uh, SB900 down so it looks like task lighting, sort of a late, evening, some sort of outdoor light coming down on Eduardo here. I'm shooting outside in open shade and I want to make my strobes as efficient as possible. So what I'm going to be doing is dropping my ISO down to the lowest possible, which is ISO 100. I'm setting at my highest sync speed at 250th of a second and I'm going to meter the scene and do exactly what the camera tells me to do. And that says, well, as a matter of fact, it's 125th at 2.8. I'm going to take a shot here. This exposure indicates exactly what the camera would like me to have it do. That doesn't look like nighttime to me. If I underexpose it by about, I'm gonna guess about two stops, we're gonna go ahead and get something that looks like this, all right? Now what we're gonna do is light up the strobes and it's gonna look like an evening shot with a task light, some sort of lamp coming down on our musician. We're just gonna run a test here with Benny as my model. Crack off a shot right here. Okay, let me share this with you, Benny. Okay, so here I'm wanting to get a little bit more shape in this light. It looks too broad. We're gonna check the zoom on the flash head make sure it's 200, maybe we can get a little bit more directional. But what's interesting to me is maybe getting a little bit of an interesting light over here on this side. And it could be a theatrical color, almost like um, a, a blue might look good in here. Our first test shot was at half power and the head was zoomed at 24. We've now zoomed ahead to 200, and it's my belief that I could drop the power by two-thirds, because when you zoom a flash head, it increases in power. So we're gonna designate this flash as uh, flash B, channel one, so I have separate control over it. And uh, the zoom head is now at 35 millimeters. I think I wanna put a little bit of a punch on there. So I'm gonna take this up to the uh, 200 millimeters that the SB900 allows us to do. This first strobe here, my main light, is on uh, Group A, Channel 1. And if you can see the second light over there, that's going to be Group B, Channel 1 also. This way I have independent control on the back of my camera. I can raise and lower the power of each strobe independently without having to walk over to them. This is, this is the best about CLS. Uh, I don't have to go back to my strobes. Uh, they're up in their position. I can raise and lower the power right from my camera position. It works fast. It makes me more efficient. I make more pictures that way. I'm trying to get Eduardo's head in such a way that I'm getting this what we call a short light on the short side of the face, lit from that direction. 
And so I want Eduardo's chin to kind of come this way here. That's right, and his head is up. Just like that looks like it's gonna be fine from my position back here. So that's what we're looking for. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Hold that. That's it right there. Yeah, it's like nighttime. I like when the head's turned and we get this, we get yeah. this rim light right in here yeah. on the side of your face, right in here like this. It's just really super. In this particular setting for the saxophone player, the ambient light basically is my shadow information. It's the, it's the shadow detail in the shot. And then with the speed light, I'm directing the viewer's eye to the area of the picture that I think is most important. I have more control in the middle of the afternoon in open shade than I would have any time during at night. If, if I wanted shadow detail and I had to shoot this at night, it would require another speed light with light coming forward towards the scene to fill in that darkness, whereas I don't need that. I just simply use my shutter speed to control that ambient light.